So the final part of uh, any um, uh, any analog output that you plan on uh, having multiple voices where you're going to change various levels of uh, the outputs um, is having a mixer circuit. So there's two ways to make a mixer circuit. One um, is the passive mixer circuit. So the passive mixer circuit is basically where you take whatever... Um, well, these are inputs to the mixer, but outputs from the various voices, so the snare drum, tom, kick, hi-hat, uh, cymbal, all of those are fed through resistors and connected together, and that's your output. And if you mix those two together, um, that passively mixes the signals. Um, and so the output of that ends up being an average voltage of all the signals. So if you have an example, something like this, where you have a 12 volt signal and a four volt signal, um, and you put those through resistors, and you know, I, I put all the resistors at, as, at the same value, so I didn't put a value here, but typically people use 50 to 100K resistors for these. And um, the output of this, uh, when put through this passive mixer circuit is, um, maximum peak to peak of zero to eight volts um, even though one of the signals is uh, four volts and one of the signals is 12 volts so there's a loss of volume using a passive mixer circuit <clears throat> this is particularly bad when you want one of the inputs to be completely off so if you take this and say put it to ground you don't want um, one input at all when you already decrease the volume to it the, it averages out and it basically decreases the volume of all of the input signals. And that is not the best way, best solution for creating a mixer. So um, in order to illustrate uh, the various mixing circuits that are available, uh, we're gonna start with a passive mixing circuit. So um, I have here um, basically uh, CD4106 with uh, two oscillator signals coming out of it. Um, the first one on the left here is just a um, oscillator that produces a square wave. Um, and on the right here with the diode there, um, I have a triangular wave. Uh, and they both come at different voltages. And so in order to demonstrate them, I'm going to show you what they look like on the oscilloscope. So the first one, let's demonstrate that. And that is right there. And that produces a square wave. Um, when you run it through a capacitor to get rid of the DC offset, the output is right there. And that gives you a 12.7 volt peak to peak um, square wave at 215 hertz. Um, now, from the other one, um, the output running through a capacitor and pull down resistor to get rid of the DC offset, I have this output, which is um, basically a sawtooth wave. Um, and it's a little finicky right there. Let's make it better more stable, oh. there we go. It's a 2.68 volt peak to peak sawtooth wave. That is a very low voltage waveform. And so um, in order to get these two to mix, I put these two 100K resistors, one from the output of that and one from the output of that and they're all going to the same uh they're all going to the same place and what we're gonna see is the combined output and that's a passive mixer circuit and you can see the output is a weird combination of superimposition of the sawtooth wave um and the square wave at 6.7 volts peak to peak. So a passive mixing circuit works really well 
for just passively mixing the circuits. The only problem is you lose a little signal. Now let's say we have two various drum voices and one of them we don't want to hear in the passive mix. Let's say we turn the volume down on one of them. So let's say, let's get rid of the sawtooth wave here and let's put the input signal to ground. Now, all that's left is the square wave signal, but look at the voltage on that square wave signal. That voltage is only 5.7 volts peak to peak. So in the passive mixing circuit, if you turn one of the inputs all the way down to a voltage of zero, you basically average the voltage. Now, if you look at the original uh, input from that square wave, that's 12 volts peak to peak. Now I'm going to switch it back to the mixed signal. There it is. So it's exactly half. So basically halved the, um, the input voltage. And so the volume of the signal goes down. And so while that's okay in an analog circuit, like at the, in the symbol where we're mixing a whole bunch of, uh, different oscillators at different frequencies together to create a uh, mixed sound where they're always one of them, uh, all of them are always going to be on. Um, when you're actually putting together the final sound, you don't want any of them to be, uh, if any of them are off or low, the volume of the entire output goes low. So let's see how we can fix that. A better way of doing it is using an op amp as a mixer and using the one principle of an op amp that is um, really good is the, um, the fact that it does math. It's an operational amplifier. So when it's an operational amplifier, it does mathematical operations. And so a summing amplifier mixer. Um, and so you take the same input or same outputs from your various voices and if you put them through similar resistor values um, and put them into um, the inverting input of an uh, op amp um, and you put the non-inverting input to ground and this becomes a virtual ground and then you put this resistor in and it should be basically the same as these resistors so you don't get any gain out of this and as the negative feedback resistor and the output you get here is a sum of all of the voltages of your various inputs. So that means that it's an, it adds, it, uh, it creates a, basically a sum. If each of these voltages was one volt, the output would be five volts. So the fix for that is by adding a summing amplifier uh, to the mix and making it an active summing uh, amplifier mixing circuit. So this is a TLO74 on the right here. Um, and that TLO74 is, uh, has four op amps on it. It's uh, um, wired to its uh, positive 12 volts and negative 12 volts in the power rails. And now I have the two outputs from the two oscillators going um, into the inverting input of one of the op amps and the feed uh and the feedback resistor here they're all 100k resistors uh these gold looking ones and um now if i put the oscillators uh the two different oscillators on now we have a summing amplifier and you see the mix of the two circuits or the two oscillators with a peak to peak voltage of 13 volts. There's no loss of signal. Now, if I take, um, if I take this guy, the, the sawtooth wave oscillator, and if I put it to uh, ground here, you just get that one signal, the square wave from the original oscillator, with no loss of volume, no loss of strength of the signal, 12.8, 12.6 volts here. So um, in summary, uh, the signal is inverted though, but in audio signals, inverting the signal doesn't really matter. 
um, and you could reinvert it by putting it through another um, uh, another op amp here, and it's still going to work out just fine. So this is how you create an active mixer. So when you have multiple different uh, drum voices in a drum machine module that uh, we built, um, and you need to you know silence one of the voices or turn down the relative volume of one of them, it doesn't make the entire the volume of the entire output of um, the, uh, the drum machine, um, go down. So that's how it works. The only caveat to this is it's inverting. So it gives you an inverted version of your output. Um, and in audio, that really doesn't matter, but in some cases, in some applications it does. So the solution for that is you just put it through another inverting op amp. Um, and just invert it back and you can add gain to it by increasing the ratio of this resistor to this resistor um, or you could just leave it alone a unity gain um, and basically that is your uh, mixer circuit um, so in this circuit the voltages are mixed and added together and inverted and then you just reinvert them so the example of that is here's a if you have a square wave and a triangle wave, um, it'll give you an inverted summation of these. And I'll demonstrate that on an oscilloscope uh, afterward. But the key to this circuit is the fact that um, there's no volume loss. And so there's no voltage loss. Voltage equals volume in this. And, um, and that uh, you get you get a nice uh, sounding signal out of all of them, and that's how I built my mixer uh, circuit for the design of the um, amplifier or, or the, the drum machine. So when an inverting summing amplifier is not desired uh, in the situation of someone who's not using it for audio, um, and inversion is a problem. Uh, what you uh, can do is take another op amp and just invert it. Um, and here I've added two of these 68K resistors, a resistor that's going from the output of the inverting summing mixer amplifier and going to the inverting input of another op amp. The uh, non-inverting input is going to ground and the feedback resistor between the output and the inverting input is a negative feedback resistor that is a that is um, another 68k resistor so the resistor so there's no gain but you can make it so that there's gain and if you look at the output of it the output of it is non-inverted so if I was going to make an inverted one let me take that and I'm going to put it into the inverted output. That's the inverted output. And this is the non-inverted output. It's re-inverted, inverted twice. Um, and you can see the peak voltage is very high. Um, and uh, there's no loss of signal. And when you put one of them to ground, if you put the sawtooth one to ground again, there's that no loss of signal, non-inverted.